Hello, my name is April and welcome to the Yoga Ranger Studio. Today's practice is a yin-inspired practice using yin poses, myofascial release, and some yoga to help open a space more and really get deep into that tissue to help release the muscles, the fascia, help give you some relief. We're gonna be focusing on the very higher upper back space, so right where you can place your hand when you reach around and touch your back. The neck, backside, all the way up to the base of the skull, the side, and we're working into the jaw. So I've had a lot of requests by people who have struggles with grinding their teeth, TMJ, jaw stiffness, which in turn causes neck stiffness. Both of them are sort of related to each other. So we're gonna use a few of our tools to sort of open the spaces up and release this. People have always asked me how many times, if you have one of these issues, how many times a week should you do this practice whenever you need relief or as often as you feel like you need it. Um, three to four times a week would not be too much. So a few props we're gonna use in this practice. So we're gonna use a block, a blanket or a rolled up towel. So go ahead and roll that towel up so you have it ready for our final pose. And two myofascial release or acupressure balls. These are uh, often called tune up balls, like T-U-N-E space up. Um, but you can use two tennis balls. They're about the same size and same texture, so you're good with tennis balls. Two tennis balls and a sock, because you want to put that, uh, the two tennis balls in a sock and tie it off at the top for our first few poses. So we're going to start on our back. We're going to take our block on the second highest height. Lay down. And you're going to have the base end of that block right where you have the base of your skull. You'll feel some little bones sticking out there. They're called occipital bones. Relax your palms out to the side, shoulders down. You're gonna very gently just turn your head side to side. So we're gonna start really gentle. You can move that block to adjust it where you really feel it compressing in there. Mine is just about right. And you can feel it when you turn your head to the left or to the right, a little pressure. Now I find myself doing this practice probably twice a week for all of you who have sort of that neck that's starting to curve over from electronics, computers, and devices. This is a great way to sort of iron those spaces out. So flip that block over so it's on its flattest side. You're going to take your two acupressure balls and you're gonna place them right at the base of your skull where you feel these little bones sticking out, the ones we just rolled out a little bit, and you're gonna hold that in place right there. You can take your hands down to the side and you're gonna bring your chin to your chest and away from your chest. Super small movements, you'll feel it. A lot of times when I have a pressure or tension headache, I will feel these bones, I will kind of touch them and they are super sore. Two more nods, chin to chest. And then you're gonna very gently just turn your head to the right and left, super tiny movements here. We're talking about a half inch to an inch, just shifting the weight back and forth. And you may notice that one side is more tender than the other. Lots of people who have tension headaches suffer from constriction on one side of their neck, not both. And ironing out those knots in the neck and the upper back can help reduce those and relieve the headache. Come back to center. You're gonna take the ball off to the side and the block off to the side, come down, and you're gonna take your three middle fingers, wrap them around behind, your thumbs are gonna go on your shoulders, and you're just gonna very gently, starting at the base of your skull, pull the tissue out. So you're gonna give yourself a little massage. Yay! Everybody loves a massage, right? And kind of grip it like you're kind of gripping a ball. Starting back up at the top, pulling the tissue out toward the outer edges of the neck. When you get down to the bottom, you start back up at the top, get down to the neck and start again. So I'm lucky I just did this yesterday, so everything feels pretty good. 
If you feel a bump or a lump, that is a neck knot. And whether it's bothering you right now or not, it sooner or later will affect you with either a headache or a lot of tightness or pain in your neck. So one more time, starting at the top, really digging in there, using your arms. and pulling it away. Go ahead and bring yourself back up. My suggestion is to make use of that block to seat yourself up nice and tall. You can use two blocks if your knees don't like this. I like to have my feet flip behind me because this makes it a little easier to do these poses. Start up at the very top. And you're gonna bring, bring that right ear over to that right shoulder, left fingertips down to the floor. And just let the weight pull you down. So let that left shoulder get super, super heavy. Go ahead and drop that chin to the chest. Switch sides, left ear over to left shoulder. And you'll feel a really strong pull through the shoulder. And you can actually take your hands and feel the muscles right along the side. So these are some of the ones that link into the jaw and can get very tight from the clothes we wear, the purses we carry. If you are someone who travels a lot, the luggage on one shoulder can really, I mean, think about pressing down on that all day long. It's a lot of constriction. and come back to center. Take your hands around behind you. Interlace the fingers. Take the thumbs to the back of the head. Elbows forward. You're just going to drop your chin to your chest and let it be a really soft stretch. You may feel this stretch further down the center of the back, maybe toward the mid-back. Release your hands, come back to center. You're gonna take that right hand around behind you, pull it over, grab hold of the inside of that left elbow, fingertips, left fingertips down to the floor. Go ahead and drop your right ear, ear right back over to your the right shoulder. Do you ever have those days where nothing comes out of your mouth just right? Every word is a little crazy. Let that right shoulder stay down toward the floor, don't let it inch up. And you're gonna drop the right the chin over to the right shoulder, and then back up to the opposite left side. Now while you're doing this, open your jaw a few times. Feel how you hear that almost clicking sound, and you can feel it in the muscles of the neck. One more time, up to the top and down to the bottom. Release your hand, come back to center. Switch sides. Left hand around behind you. I like to grab that hand and pull it a little bit further. Let that left shoulder drop. Grab the inside of that right elbow, fingertips down to the floor. Go ahead and drop that left ear over to that left shoulder. And then drop that chin to the left shoulder and then up to the opposite. Now this is the side I struggle with the most. I find that the knots always occur on the right side and I always feel some constriction, most likely because I carry everything in my right hand. Open your jaw a few times. Notice how you really feel that in the neck. Two more times. Back up to that far corner, and then down to the shoulder. Drop the hands behind you, <laughs> release them. And then you're gonna turn your head way over to the right, take your finger, and just press it a little bit further, keeping that left shoulder from starting to arch forward. Keep your back in line. 
but sometimes you can feel this all the way down the left side body. Everything is so attached. Back to center and over to the opposite side. Come back to center. We're going to come back down, but this time we're going to use just one of those tennis balls or acupressure balls. We're going to roll out the neck in a little different way. So you're going to take that ball and you're going to place it right so your cervical spine is right down the middle. You're going to roll it out till you feel sort of this knot your spine little bit squishier spot. It'll be right at the base of your skull. You will probably feel this a lot. I do. Bend your knees, keep your feet flat, and you're going to ever so gently roll that chin toward the floor and then back up toward the ceiling. Well, I told you we were going to start very gentle, we're moving into a little bit more, I hesitate to say the word aggressive, <laughs> a little bit deeper into this tissue. Here again, open your jaw a few times. Notice how you feel this. You may actually feel this in the point where your jaw comes together. Two more times. And I found this spot gets so sore, so I've learned to start really rolling it out a lot more. So you're going to shift your hips over, drop your knees over to the left, take that ball and roll it a little bit further so it's like right underneath your ear, and you can feel like the bone underneath your ear, and it's right below that and inside it. Here again, you're just going to turn that chin a little further to the chest, back and forth. Tiny little space right underneath the ear. It's not on bone, it's on the kind of squishy stuff right below that. Good to open your mouth a few more times here. Two more little tilts. And then come back to center. We're going to work on the jaw. So you're going to roll all the way over onto your left side. You're going to take that ball and you're going to put it open your mouth and you can feel like an indent. That's where that ball is going to go, right in that indented space, so right below the cheekbone. You're going to open your mouth and then roll back and forth, up toward the ear. Tiny little movements. It's about an inch or two, not super far. Open your mouth a few times. You'll feel this, even if you're not someone who grinds your teeth all the time. Occasional grinding can really lock up the jaw. Sometimes you have to move the ball back because it tends to migrate away. And then maybe do some circles. So bring your chin and roll it up toward the crown of your head. Massaging the space, opening the mouth a few times, and then switching directions. Chin toward the chest. One more space here. Turn on to your side all the way. You're going to have it right where the temple is. So if you have ever had somebody give you a facial massage, they massage your temple and it feels so good. We're going to do that same thing. Right hand down, so you have a little bit of soft compression here. And you're going to roll in that little space where your temple is. And then back the other way. Now a couple of suggestions for headaches. If you are someone who likes the use of aromatherapy or essential oils, peppermint diluted very heavily because peppermint is what we call a hot oil and it will burn you if used directly on the skin. Diluted pretty heavily, just placed at the temples can help attention headache relief. You can also diffuse it in a room Come back up, release that ball, say thank goodness that side's done, and we're going to switch to the other side. I'm going to roll the other side so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Come back onto your back. 
once again, finding that spot, start with the, the spinal and then move over a little bit to the right. Oh, <laughs> this is the bad side, remember for me. Turn your head back to center and over to the right. You can feel that tiny little knot from yesterday getting smaller and smaller. It was about the size of like a walnut a couple of days ago. Even just sniffing peppermint oil can sometimes help relieve a headache. Okay, start to drop your knees over. Make sure your block is far enough out so you don't lose the ball there. Right below the ear, drop that chin down to the floor and roll up. So remember, not on the bone, just on that tissue right below the bone behind, below the ear. Open your mouth a few times. You can already feel a lot of release. I don't even have a lot of jaw issues and that feels really good to have rolled out that left side. Feels a lot more open. And then roll over onto your side for the jaw work. This sounds bad, it sounds like jaws. <laughs> Find that spot, open your mouth, you can feel it. Place it right there. And then you're just gonna back and forth, tiny little movements. Open your mouth a few times. Right where the jaw hinges, open and closed. Start to do some little circles. And you can press more firmly into the ball if you want to. I find that the weight of my head is just enough for me to get the massage that I want. Make whatever movements feel good here. Rocking back and forth if that feels good or just hang out in one spot feels good too. Take it to the temple. Little circles on the temple. And then back the other direction. You want to go both ways. Now know that when you roll out, it is often a little bit painful or a lot painful. But later on, not too far from now, it will feel way better. Like this side already feels a whole lot better and I didn't even have a really bad headache. Pressure down. And then you're done. Go ahead and come up a little bit. You're gonna take the block down so you can use it lower. And you're gonna take both those tune-up balls or tennis balls out of their little container or sock. We're gonna use those for your back. Suggest so you start just lying down to begin with. You're gonna take one of those tune-up balls and you're gonna place it right inside your shoulder blade. So you feel for your shoulder blade and you're gonna tuck it right inside, right where the point comes in. So you can feel like a little point coming in you're right inside that, you're gonna rock over to the side. We're gonna start with just one to begin with. Let your weight settle around that ball and you're just gonna rock a little bit side to side, maybe up and down, do some pelvic tilts here. No matter how many times I roll out, this area is always tight. I hold a lot of my tension in my upper back and if you to hold a lot of tension in your upper back, you will find that you might need to roll out more often on this area. Some people hold it in their lower back or their hips. Some people hold it in their shoulders. So taking that block, you're gonna put it underneath your hips. Now, if this is too much pressure on that ball and that's just too much for you, you can always come back down to the floor, but I find that I rolled it out enough now where it's okay. Drop your other ball down to the side. We're gonna take the arms up and do just a little wave. Here's your little dance for rolling out. One hand goes up and overhead, the other hand behind your hip and back to the other direction. 
sort of getting the cross fiber, those muscles at the top. Sometimes it's nice to just kind of wiggle side to side. You can bend your elbows. When you change your arm position, you'll feel, it's like if you wrap your arms around and give yourself a hug, you'll feel a change. If you take your arms out to the side, you'll feel a change because you've changed muscle positions and you're getting different areas. Stop there, you're gonna roll it up a little bit higher. So now it's more right behind the shoulder. So if you reach your hand up, you can touch the ball at the very top. Once again, pelvic tilts, just kind of rocking back and forth. Now if you want more out of this, you can always lift your hips and put more pressure. That's a lot of pressure for me today, so I'm gonna stay with the block. You can always take the block up even higher too, and that'll add more pressure. So change the block position and you get more pressure in a very specific area. Here again, just switching arms. So if one spot that you find you're rolling out is super sore, try taking the ball a little bit lower or a little bit higher. Here again, you can kind of roll back and forth, kind of shift the shoulders back and forth. And this will get a little bit more of the tissue toward the outside edge of the shoulder. And then we're gonna switch. I'm gonna drop my block down because that's where I started on the other side. Find the tip of my shoulder blade that comes in and points in. It's almost like a little arrow right inside of that and slightly below it. So there'll be a point and you're gonna drop it just a little bit inside and below. I can feel this side is crankier than the other. So interesting piece of information. Sometimes lower down in your body, it will seem like something hurts the opposite of what it hurts at the top. This is kind of a cross fiber. So for me, the left shoulder blade hurts a lot more than the right, yet it's my right neck that gets the knot. Little pieces of information, right? sometimes your left hip will hurt and your right jaw will hurt. Everything is attached, particularly when it comes to fascia. Everything is sort of attached there. So back and forth, a little rolling here. You can go down a little bit lower. If you find a spot, you can just kind of hang out there. If that's too much, move a little higher and hang out there. Right. Arms up, you're gonna cross fiber. Back and forth, waving. Rock the hips side to side so you kind of shift that ball. You can kind of feel it moving a little bit in and out and up and down. If you have a really great song, you can always do this to a really great song and make it into a whole little dance. And I have done that, so <laughs> I know. Okay. Give yourself a hug. Rock a little bit side to side. And then shift that ball up a little bit higher so that you can take your hand and you can feel the ball right at the same level as your hand on the shoulder. Here again, some pelvic tilts. You can shift and raise the height of that block so you get more pressure. And that will give you quite a bit more pressure. I wouldn't go all the way to the top height because it's a little bit unstable, but you can always lift your hips higher. Maybe rock the hips side to side. You can once again take that cross fiber stretch. Left and right arms going different directions. Move your upper shoulders side to side a little bit. Do a little shimmy. Give yourself a hug and put more pressure there. Maybe do some circles. Do whatever you feel. You feel like a sensation of kind of breaking up some of that neck knot adhesion type thing. If you do this more often, you'll find it is less painful every time you do it. And you will prevent headaches and knots from happening or the knot will go away a lot faster. So for me, having done it yesterday, there's a lot of relief there. Okay, two balls, one on either side. You're gonna put them a little bit lower than you've had before. So right below that spot you had at the very start of this little on your back, relax those shoulder blades. We're gonna take a little angel wings, cross over and back, over. If you take your arms super wide, take them super wide. It'll kind of pinch those muscles in between. You can try a little climbing thing, like you shift your weight, like you're pulling up a rope. 
that just rocks your shoulders side to side. You can put a huge amount of pressure. So just press your back in there and then just rock tiny space. You can cover little inches by inch. People often ask me, where do I roll out and each week? It would be great to cover your entire body each week, but if you have specific areas that are very tight and very painful, those would be the ones you'd wanna focus more of your attention on. I would still recommend rolling out areas that are not a big deal to you. Definitely roll out your feet and your lower legs every day because, or as often as you can because everybody needs that. And then scrunch the shoulders up and then pull them all the way down. Lift one shoulder, then the other. Take those mean little balls out there. Block off to the side and roll all the way up. You're thinking, where does the good yin part come in? Momentarily. <laughs> so one more great thing to use to help relieve jaw tension is a pose. It's actually a pranayama, a breath regulation. It's called Simhasana or Lion's Pose. And I'm gonna do it sideways because it makes more sense to see what I'm doing sideways. So you're gonna come onto your heels. You can sit on a block if you want to. Lean forward, you're gonna inhale, lift your chest, exhale. Stick your tongue out as far as you can and make the yuckiest face you can. So inhale, lean forward. Cross your eyes, inhale, and scrunch up your face. One more, inhale. Move your jaw around a little bit. It's a really silly looking breath regulation, but nobody's watching you. Everybody's just watching me. It's all good. <laughs> okay, so our block out in front. Here we come to the stuff everybody's waiting for, which is the yin part of this practice. Take your knees wide, your feet together. Have your block out in front where you know your head is going to land. You wanna have your entire forehead. So the edge of the block is right along the nose. You wanna have support. We're gonna do a little twisted ropes here. So you're gonna take that right arm, tuck it underneath, rest your forehead on that block, and you may have to adjust where the block is to help you here. Left hand, palm to palm. You're gonna pull it out just a little bit further, and we're gonna stay here for a little while. Nice deep breaths into the shoulders, into the neck. You can press your head into the block, let your elbows relax. This is half a twisted rope yin posture. You can almost feel the skin stretching on the back side of the shoulder. Just let that shoulder soften down towards your feet, so don't let it creep up towards your chin. I use a little pressure in my left hand to hold that arm down a little bit more so I get more stretch on the back of the shoulder, but you don't have to do that. So this is a great way to keep your head in line and your neck in line while stretching the back side of the shoulder. It's also good for calming and soothing. So when you bring your forehead to a surface, blanket, floor, or block, it helps calm, soothe, make you more restful and sedated. So if you have a tension headache, you're not feeling very comfortable because your neck is in knots. This is a way to sort of soothe that as well. Just one more minute here, then we'll switch sides.
while you're here, breathe into the back side of that right shoulder. Breathing softness and release to the shoulder, the upper back, and the neck. Gently take that left hand down to the floor. Press yourself straight up. Do a little cat cow here. Stretch back. Arching and rounding and curving the shoulders back over. And then we're going to switch sides. Go ahead and walk that left hand way out. Move your block to wherever you need it to be so your forehead is supported. Take that right hand on top of the palm. Give it a little pull, a little stretch. The weight of your head be super heavy on the block. Now you could do this on the floor, but I really recommend using the block because it helps support your neck in line with your spine more as we're trying to iron out the neck. Let the shoulders soften toward the hips. Breathe into that left shoulder. Just about one more minute here. Start to bring that right hand flat to the floor. Press straight up on your fingertips. You can bring the knees a little bit closer together. A few cat cows here. Releasing the twist. block off to the side and grab that rolled up blanket. Everybody's favorite pose, supported fish. We're gonna come down right where your arms are right on the opposite side. You can bend your knees, start to walk your shoulder blades so the shoulder blades just touch the floor. You can walk the feet wide and drop the knees together, or you can take your legs out straight. Take your arms into a cactus, but then let the arms go out more like sort of at an angle. So instead of just being cactus right here, we're gonna let them be a little loose, like a loose W. Breathe into the shoulders, breathe into the jaw and the neck. Let there be some softness and length. If it helps, you can take your hands behind your neck Lengthen it out a little bit more and then put it back down. Breathe into the upper back and chest, allowing it to soften and open, lifting. Let your breath be a little deeper, deeper, fuller, and richer.
with all the time we spend on devices, sometimes it can feel really good to reverse that direction, leaning over a phone or a computer or a tablet. Now, if you'd like to take a traditional Shavasana laying flat on your back, you can always begin to shift where you bring your feet flat, press through those feet, lift the hips, pull the blanket off to the side and lay flat on your back, whatever Shavasana you like. Or you can spend a couple more minutes here in a less traditional Shavasana. Here again, maybe opening your jaw a few times. Letting it soften and release. Last minute or so here. Gently start to bend your knees if they're not already bent. If you still have your back lifted up with the blanket, you can lift your hips, start to kind of move that blanket down and out. Maybe gently rock the knees side to side. Make fists out of your hands and then spread those fingers wide a couple of times. And then reaching up over your head, come back to center, stretch through your spine, be super long and tall, and then roll over to your right side. Take a couple of breaths here. Then when you're ready, press yourself up into whatever seated position you like best. You can keep your eyes closed or open. Take your hands palms up or palms down onto your knees. And a couple of just breaths there. So you're gonna inhale, fill your lungs all the way up. Open your mouth and sigh. Two more. And last one, inhale deeply. Drop your fingertips down to the floor. Inhale, sweep the hands up, open your eyes, look up at your palms, exhale, hands to heart. Peace and namaste. I hope this practice helps your upper back, neck, and shoulders and jaw feel a lot better. 
I hope it relieves some of that pressure. Feel free to use pieces of this or the whole practice together to sort of help iron out those areas and give yourself some relief from headaches and TMJ as well as neck knots. And I hope to see you again very soon. Please like and comment down below if you enjoy this practice and are benefiting from it. Please share with other people who might be interested. And also, if you're not a subscriber, please click that subscribe button down over here to your right, my left side, and join me each week for new videos every single week, a couple of times a week. Lots of different things to choose from that can help you feel a little bit better, help you embrace your yin side, using myofascial release techniques like yin and the myofascial release balls, as well as yoga practices, meditation, and breath. I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.